Hi, I'm Colleen Loder, Director of Technical Solutions at the CAGBC. Today's Review Insight session provides direction on how lead reviewers verify the rainwater management credits. For this session, I will walk you through the checklist the CAGBC review staff use to confirm compliance for rainwater management. It's something you can do before submitting your projects to smooth the review process and limit follow-up questions. The focus will be on the popular option one, percentile of rainfall events, but most of these steps apply to option two as well. These apply equally to lead V4 and 4.1. And when starting a review, we first determine if the right percentile of rainfall events has been calculated. There are several steps to verify this. First thing we open up is the lead rainfall event calculator that you obtain from USGBC's website and confirm there's at least 10 years of rainfall event data on the historical data tab. You don't need to go overboard here. The calculator does say 30 more years is recommended, but the minimum is to have at least 10. The next thing we check in order to confirm the right percentile was calculated is if rainfall events of less than 2.5 millimeters were removed from that list of historical data. The requirement to remove these limited rain events is rather buried in the reference guide. It's under further explanation in the credits. Forgetting to remove these small rainfall events will underestimate your percentile rain event depth. And don't forget to ensure the data is collected from the right location. That is a monitoring station that's relatively near the project site. Sometimes for rural locations, you may not be able to find a monitoring station that is in the same city as your project site. So in that case, be sure to include a narrative on how the location is representative of the rainfall at the project site. Once you've completed the previous steps, you can then select your chosen percentile on the historical data tab and view the total rainfall expected from the storm event. It is the precipitation amount that the percentage of rainfall events will not exceed and be represented by this rainfall depth in millimeters. And please always provide the calculator in Excel, not the PDF of the pages. It's to your benefit to do so as reviewers can often correct errors to confirm compliance without waiting for the required input from your team. And the next thing we check is the site area. There are a number of credits which require the project team to upload the lead project site area. And one area cross-check for a lead reviewer is to confirm the same boundary is used for all applicable credits. And it's not just about the lead boundary itself, but considering if all hardscape and softscape areas are the same, or if the vegetation areas are the same. And don't forget to use everything in your whole boundary in your calculations, all hardscape, landscaping, roof, etc. So now that we have the right percentile and we have the right site area, our third check is ensuring the correct calculations for runoff volume. So how is the runoff volume calculated? This one can be tricky as the calculator just has a single cell for inputting the data. And there are no instructions in the calculator for how this connects to the historical data tab with the percentile depth. There's also no place to add more detail in the calculator, so including a further narrative and calculations are needed for this one. Step 6 in the reference guide, under Step-by-Step -step Guidance, outlines how to calculate the runoff volume, with more detail provided under further explanation. But generally, you have to consider the entire site area, the chosen percentile, and then the runoff coefficients for, each, uh, for the different types of surfaces. Sometimes we see project teams just assume no runoff coefficient for simplicity. That is, that all rain landing on a surface will become runoff. In this case, the project team simply multiplies their site area by their chosen percentile and arrives at the volume of runoff we manage. This is an overestimation, but perfectly fine for review purposes as it assumes the worst case. However, the more accurate methodology is noted in the reference guide and requires determining the runoff coefficients for each land type or the percent impervious following the small storm hydrology method. Generally, we expect to see each land use type, whether it's your parking area, sidewalks, flower beds, green roof, white roof, etc., each with their area listed separately, multiplied by the chosen percentile of rainfall depth, and then multiplied by the runoff coefficient for that surface. Obviously, the more impervious a surface is, the more runoff you expect from it. And then all those values add up together to be the runoff volume that gets entered into the calculator. 
Our fourth check is determining if the chosen percentile is actually managed on site. Let's start by looking at your lead project boundary again. Consider that runoff volume we came up with as the volume of water in a cup. The water in your cup will rain evenly over your site. This is your 80th percentile of rainwater event. That is the amount of water you now need to keep on site and manage somehow in your lead project boundary. The only way it can leave the site is through infiltration, evapotranspiration, or collection for reuse, which can be used for irrigation, toilet or and urinal flushing, cooling towers, vehicle washing, etc. You cannot store it and release it to the sewer. You cannot use any best management practices off-site, like a pond. It must be kept and dealt with on-site. The fifth check is to confirm if the volumes attributed to each measure are appropriate. This is a bit tricky, as the calculator takes a very simple approach, which may lead a reader into thinking that if the total runoff volume from the various measures is more than the total runoff to be managed, the credit is achieved. Not quite. The calculations must account for the volume that's being sent to each measure. So let's go back to our cup example. Usually you wouldn't have your entire 80th percentile of rainfall volume all neatly merging into one cup. Instead, you'll probably have multiple collection and catchment areas. For our example, let's just pretend we have three. We'll keep it simple. Runoff from the roof, runoff from a larger terrace patio type area, and then a large amount of runoff from the parking and landscape. The first is all being captured for reuse for toilet and urinals water supply. The terrace water is being moved through the green roof and planter boxes for evapotranspiration. And the largest amount running off the hardscape and over the landscape is all draining to a large rain garden on site. But what if one catchment, say the roof, had a much higher volume in its 80th percentile than the strategies being directed towards could actually handle? In this case, you would need to resize that strategy to manage the larger volume, or redirect some of that water to another strategy. So please provide calculations to confirm the volumes managed by each strategy. The last check is determining how the chosen percentile is dealt with on site. Are the measures the project site employing considered either green infrastructure or low impact development as required by the credit? Now, we're not gonna dig deep into these strategies today. They are a topic for a much longer session, but there are many resources that exist online that can help you determine the appropriate strategies for your project. Reviewers do look for various documentation to help confirm the capacity volumes handled by the strategies. Narratives are always helpful and be sure to provide plans and details and calculations, especially for water capture and reuse. And that brings us to an end of our checklist for confirming the rainwater management credit. It's good to take a step back after digging into the calculations and documentation to remember the intent of this credit though. The work your project team does for rainwater management can result in very positive impacts from the environment and be very beautiful too. If you have questions on any of these issues we discussed today, please don't hesitate to reach out to us at Lead Coach Canada. Thank you for listening.